AMD finally launched RDNA 4 in the 9070 and 9070 XT, and it appears to be a big success. Has AMD just fixed the GPU market that Nvidia broke? Let's get into it. The launch appears to be a big success, and many people reported being able to get a GPU online, and the best success stories came from people who actually went to a retailer like Micro Center. AMD executives must be patting themselves on the back with all the pics of people standing in line at Micro Center for hours to get their new Radeon GPU. That should get them the praise they stated they were searching for. So while there appears to be many winners in this year's game of, can you get a new GPU? There are many stories of people who are not able to get a GPU or get one near the MSRP that AMD claimed. AMD claimed MSRP pricing of $599 for the XT and $549 for the non-XT. And when I look at the pricing at Micro Center, a bimodal cost distribution becomes very clear. You have exactly 6 GPUs at the MSRP of $599. The next step up is $729 and goes up to $849. That seems rather odd. You would expect some GPUs to be in the $600 range. There are none. Once you get beyond the first six GPUs at MSRP, the price jumps to $729 and beyond. Checking Newegg, you have only three at MSRP, one at $669, and all the others, $719 and up. A bimodal distribution like this in pricing is not normal. These non-MSRP prices over $700 would be consistent with AMD launching at a price of $699, not $599. And I know people are going to say, but the tariffs. Remember, AMD has been stocking these GPUs up for months and before the tariffs ever came into effect. I would expect that two months from now, not at launch. And if you look at the 9070 non-XT, which has an MSRP of 549, again, there are exactly six at Micro Center. There are no other GPUs under 600, none at 579 or 599. The rest of these GPUs are in the $600 range, with a few extending into the low $700. Checking Newegg, you have only four at MSRP, with the next one jumping to $629 and the rest extending to just over $700. Again, this bimodal distribution in pricing is not normal and suggests something is artificially creating this condition. These non-RMSRP prices would be consistent with AMD launching a price of $599, not $549. This would indicate that the AIBs were preparing for pricing that would be consistent with $699 for the XT and $599 for the non-XT. And now the story comes out that MSRP pricing is for the launch only and that subsequent restockings will not have MSRP pricing. I think AMD took a calculated risk and said, hey, if Nvidia can announce a product at a fake MSRP, why can't we? So they copied the fake launch price idea from Nvidia. Fake MSRP versus fake MSRP. I mean, you have to fight fire with fire, right? The Verge asked some very simple questions for AMD to confirm or deny the statements about the prices, and AMD avoided the question. Why? If they confirm it, that means they lied with the MSRP, and it was only introductory price on a set number of GPUs, and they can get sued. If they deny it to The Verge, and the truth comes out, they can get sued. So they ignore the questions, which means there is some truth in these statements. Effectively, they got caught in a lie. It all just feels so scummy. So while AMD did provide stock to the starving market, and there are many happy people this week, why are so many others not able to get a GPU? People are quick to blame the problem are all the scalpers and the bots they employ to buy up all the stock and turn around and resell them. The bots do prevent regular people who just want to buy a GPU from buying one on launch day, but the bots would not be as successful as they are if e-tailers like Amazon, Newegg, and Best Buy actually did something to ensure the GPUs on launch day went to gamers and not scalpers. But that would take effort and cost money to do. E-tailers just don't care who the GPU is sold to as long as it's sold. The only way to really get a GPU is if you live near a retailer like Micro Center in the US. There are 28 Micro Center locations where you could have stood in line for hours and depending on the location, stood outside in the cold for hours to purchase your shiny new GPU. Just know that you would have to show up pretty early in the morning since scalpers are standing in line as well 
and they're looking to get the cheapest MSRP models to then flip on eBay. But scalpers are just a symptom of the problem. They will flock to wherever there is a shortage of a product. So the real question is, why is there such a shortage? NVIDIA has 80 to 90% of the GPU market share. And in this chart from Tom's Hardware, you see in 2024, NVIDIA sold 30 million GPUs. That's an average of 2.5 million GPUs every month. NVIDIA has not been supplying 2.5 million GPUs per month in January or February. In NVIDIA's earning call on February 26, Jensen reconfirmed the issue they had with Blackwell last fall, and I covered that in my RTX 5090 5080 post launch disaster video. He said Blackwell had a hiccup that probably cost us a couple of months. That's Blackwell for the data center. So, how do you make up that lost time? You take the wafers that should have gone for gaming and apply them for the data center. And when you see the numbers, you start to understand. Last quarter, the data center brought in $35 billion, while gaming brought in two and a half. Let those numbers sink in. $35 billion to two and a half. They're using a large portion of the wafers that should have been used in the RTX 50 series GPUs for their data center business. Quite simply, NVIDIA effectively abandoned the GPU market for gamers to catch up and to meet demand for the data center due to, as Jensen called it, the hiccup that Blackwell had. If you want to understand why the things are the way they are, follow the money. And that has left a lot of gamers fighting for very few GPUs, and that lack of supply has triggered the scalpers to come in with their fancy bots and buy up the GPUs online and then turn around and sell them to the highest bidder. But even if the scalpers didn't, most people would still not be able to buy a GPU. They would just be out of stock. The supply by NVIDIA is not there. I don't like this situation as a gamer. However, if I was in Jensen's shoes, I would do the exact same thing. Because if I didn't, the board of directors would have me fired. And if Jensen doesn't, the board would remove him as CEO and put someone there in his place that would. The bright side of all this is that Blackwell is really just an AI architecture. It's not really for gamers. Plus, this is by far the worst launch NVIDIA has ever had for a gaming GPU. In a competitive market, this GPU would be shunned. Back in the day when the market was competitive, gamers would laugh at you if you bought this disaster of a product. But this is an abandoned market and gamers are fighting for whatever scraps they can find. And this is where AMD comes in. AMD made a splash in the market because they actually had stock to sell. Having delayed their launch in January, they have been able to stock up at retailers for months and have good supply. Well, good supply for a Radeon GPU launch. The 9070 XT is shown to perform very well in the reviews. Back in January, I said that this GPU would be like a 7900 XT Plus, and when we look at tech power up, they show it as 5% faster than an XT. Also back in January, I said the 9070 would be like a 7900 GRE Plus, and Tech Power Up is showing it as 10% ahead of the GRE. But the big improvement with RDNA 4 is in ray tracing and FSR 4, and they did close the gap with NVIDIA this generation. The biggest improvement can be seen by looking at how the 9070 XT is similar to AMD's last gen flagship in the XTX. Now, AMD won this fight because they showed up. NVIDIA was a no show. There is no bigger evidence of how little NVIDIA cares than when NVIDIA didn't even show up on the 5070 launch day with their very own Founders Edition. It was delayed to later in the month. I'm going to be very interested when NVIDIA does show up with stock, how many people will turn away from them and buy Radeon instead. And much of that will depend on how long NVIDIA ignores the gaming market. Now in a normal market, NVIDIA would be bleeding sales to its competitor. But this is far from a normal market, and it has been this way for quite some time. Again, Jensen has 80 to 90% of the GPU market and is a monopoly. Jensen is not threatened by Lisa Su and her little Radeon division for two reasons. First, AMD does not have the capacity to take away the market from NVIDIA. Last year, NVIDIA made 30 million discrete GPUs for the market. AMD made four. 30 versus four. That's a big gap. 
How long would it take AMD and all of its AIB partners to ramp up production from four to even something approaching double digits? It would take them six months to a year, and even then, they would only be supplying about a third of the market demand. There would still be a shortage, and NVIDIA would be able to respond in much less time. The second reason Jensen is not threatened by Lisa Su and Radeon Division is that he knows she's not a gamer. Beyond the consoles and handhelds, she's not interested in competing with Jensen for the desktop GPU market. When Lisa Su became CEO of AMD in 2014, Radeon had over 30% market share. Today, it's less than half that and actually closer to a third of that number. She is focused on the data center and AI just like Jensen. She would happily rob the Radeon division of any wafers if that means she can turn those into data center products that make more money. In short, Jensen knows that Lisa doesn't have the capacity nor the will to take away the discrete GPU market from NVIDIA. Remember, the demand in this market is not abnormally high. This is not like it was during the pandemic when everyone wanted to build a PC. The demand is the same as before, the issue is that when the dominant GPU maker in NVIDIA just walks away from the market, the supply becomes abnormally low. Very abnormally super low. Again, NVIDIA is a no-show. So while AMD can't fix the market, they are making it less broken, at least on launch day. The launch of the 5070 and 97 GPUs in consecutive days has been exciting. When is the last time GeForce and Radeon faced off this close to each other? The after launch this time is also very different, as I'm not so disappointed with Radeon like with the launch of the 7900 XTX. I'm more disappointed in NVIDIA with its meh performance and no-show attitude. There are still many questions that I have to understand the improvements to the architecture of both RDNA 4 and Blackwell that the reviews just don't cover. And while I was unable to get a GPU online at Newegg, since they canceled my order three times due to insufficient stock, I will get one because I truly want to see how it compares against my aging 3090. I mean, how does the ray tracing compare? Is FSR4 now as good as DLSS4? And how well does it scale with power? And what CPU is needed to not bottleneck the performance? Yeah, just so many questions. If you like this kind of no-nonsense content and want to see more, like it, share it, subscribe. And I know a lot of people are wondering, should I upgrade this generation? It's a broken market and Nvidia broke it. And with the scarcity of GPUs, prices will continue to be high. Things won't return until Nvidia decides to supply the market again, or another GPU manufacturer decides to provide competition. If you're interested in how Nvidia significantly altered the pricing structure of GPUs last gen, you can check out one of these. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.